Do you know how did the dinosaurs that once ruled the Earth have become extinct? Do you know how did the millions of living species came to existence that are living on Earth today? What is the main reason for this? Do you know why do monkeys still exist if humans evolved from monkeys? Does the evolution of living things stop here? If it still continues in the future as part of the evolutionary sequence, which organs of man are going to disappear? Let's find out the answers to all such questions in this video. It was the year 1859. Those were the days when it was strongly believed that God created the entire universe and all living things on this earth. At such a time, there was a man named Charles Darwin. He proposed the theory of evolution through the book called The Origin of the Species. It was a sensation then. He said that evolution is the reason for the formation of so many species of life on this earth. At that time, many people opposed it and rejected it. On the other hand, those who support this theory have also increased. But after a few years to this evolution theory, the international scientific community accepted it after finding a few hundred evidences. Now, the theory of evolution is a great theory in science. All right, what does this theory actually say? Now let's see what is evolution. Evolution means changes in the characteristics of a species over generations. Simply, evolution means changes occurred in the body of an organism due to its appearance and shape. These changes in behavior are passed on to generations. But let's see how changes occur in this body. Every organism is made up of billions of cells. Every cell also contains DNA. It is this DNA that determines the shape, color, behavior, everything of the organism. All this information is also in the form of genetic code. However, when cells divide, DNA from one cell is copied into another cell. At the time of division, due to external weather conditions, on very rare cases, there will be changes in the genetic code of this DNA. This is called mutation, but any small change in this genetic code causes a big change in that organism. For example, in the genetic code of a white mouse, a small change will occur in the next generation. All mice are likely to be born black. Also, a small change occurred in the DNA of a mango tree. In the next generation, the ripe mangoes will grow to the size of a football. In this way, small changes in DNA can lead to big consequences. Even when Darwin proposed this theory, no one even knew what DNA was. But depending on the body structure of animals, we can derive which animal could have evolved from which animal. There are mainly two points in this theory. One is that all living things on this earth are related to each other. And two, every living thing is adapted to the environment in which they live. They change to survive, and this is called natural selection. If any organisms cannot survive the environment, they will become extinct. The genes of organisms that survive and adapt to those conditions are passed on to the next generation. Evolution is the formation of new organs in an organism as per the need, or some organs that are not needed are destroyed internally. Now let's learn some practical examples of this. Some of us humans have a better climate on Mars. Let's say you have gone to live there permanently. Mars has 66% less sunlight than Earth. When the light is dim, the black pupil in our eye is enlarged. Also, when the light is high, this iris becomes smaller, so there is less light on Mars than on Earth. According to the climate there, the irises are used to be large. As a result, the children of the next generation of humans have larger pupils. Also, the Mars gravitational force is less when compared to on Earth, so their people grow taller. So as part of evolution there to adapt to the climate, our body changes and becomes different. In a few years, humans on Earth and humans on Mars will be very different. Also, let's see another example. Suppose we take some white mice and release them in a hot, sunny desert area in their bodies to protect them from the sun. Their bodies turn black due to the release of melanin. This causes changes in their DNA and all future generations of mice will turn black. It means that two species of mice are formed due to the simple change of place. Thus, when organisms change their habitat, depending on the area they are in, they need to survive there their bodies undergo changes and evolve into new organisms.
All right, now let's see how this biological evolution has happened. Life began as unicellular organisms from bacteria and then archaea. And then these bacteria and archaea are further divided into the plants, fungi, and animal species. This evolution did not happen in a line. But this evolution happened like how trees' branches evolves in all directions. If on the one hand plants evolve, on the other hand, evolution has been taking place in animals. After passing through some stages, and for the first time ever, a fish-like creature with a backbone evolved. Okay, till now from our schools, we have learned that we all evolved from monkeys, right? But before that, we all evolved from fish, not from monkeys. All the vertebrates on this earth also evolved from these fishes. Then as part of the fish-like creature's attempt to come out of the water onto land, they became amphibians, that is, organisms that can live in water as well as on land. Later, these were divided into two categories. One is egg-laying animals, and two is lactating animals, which means milk-producing animals. Firstly, these egg-laying animals are evolved from turtles to crocodiles, and then they became dinosaurs. These dinosaurs roamed the earth for 16 billion years. At that time, these dinosaurs are the stronger species than any other species on this earth. These dinosaurs are again of multiple species, ranging from smallest dinosaurs that are only 40 centimeters long to 115 feet long and 100 tons in weight. There were 700 types of dinosaurs that grew to huge sizes, and some of these were small size flying dinosaurs. All right, you all think that dinosaurs are extinct, right? You know, all the birds we see now are also evolved from this dinosaur. In particular, the chicken is closely related to the dinosaur. Scientists say it is possible to reproduce dinosaurs through chicken DNA. You all know the reason for dinosaurs to extinct. Well, when these dinosaurs roamed the Earth, an asteroid bigger than Mount Everest hit the Earth at high speed. Due to the tremendous energy released by it, along with the dinosaur, many animals of huge size have become extinct. Only a few small species of animals are alive that are habituated to live in water, caves, and underground. 80% of the living species on this earth died due to the impact of the asteroid. Later on, apes and lactating animals, which we are familiar with, are evolved from a mouse-like creature. We all know that monkeys used to roam in forests and trees and they are habituated to move from one tree to another tree. But 40 million years ago, due to the changes in climate, the forests are disappeared and the distance between the trees increased. Till then, monkeys used to walk on four legs, but due to the increased distance between trees, we had no other choice other than standing up on two legs and walking. This is an important step in the evolution of man. This is how the first ancestor of the human race, Homo sapiens, evolved. Here many people have a doubt. If we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Let's see why. We all have seen this figure as the evolution of man. But in fact, human evolution did not happen in a line like this, nor did we evolve from monkey to chimpanzee. Monkeys, gorillas, orangutans, chimpanzees, and humans all together had a common ancestor. All these evolved from that. That means separate track for monkeys, separate track for chimpanzees, and separate track for humans. And that's why our DNA could closely match their DNA because we all come from the same ancestor. That is the only reason for why monkeys still exists, but the monkeys did not become chimpanzees and later did not become humans. Well, it doesn't mean that evolution stops here. It is still going on. As part of evolution, some organs of our body may also become extinct, scientists say. Let's see what they are. Wisdom teeth. Some of us get wisdom teeth after we reach a certain age. Earlier primitives used these to chew the raw meat. But now as we cook and eat food, the need for these has reduced. With this, the wisdom teeth slow disappears. That's why many people still don't get wisdom teeth. Palmaris longus muscle. If you close your thumb and little finger together, a long muscle will appear near your wrist. But some people don't see it. That's because animals before we evolved hung out in trees a lot. This muscle is useful for that. But humans don't live on trees anymore. With that, as the muscle becomes redundant, it gradually disappears. Already 11% of people do not have this muscle. Tailbone. We all have a tailbone at the end of our spine. It means tail. We all have a small tail when we are fetuses in our mother's womb. 
but it disappears as the fetus grows. This tailbone is also once very useful for climbing trees. There are more than 100 people born with a tail around the world. We don't need a tail anymore. And hence, very so soon that tailbone will also disappear. Third eyelid. We know that one eye has two upper and lower eyelids, but we also have a third eyelid. Have you seen that there is a pink color in the corner of our eye? It is also a kind of eye slip. It is mostly for birds. They are strong winds while flying in the air. It is useful to protect from dust, but that too will soon disappear as we don't need it. Auricularis muscles. Few people can move their ears on their own, but that is not possible for many people. There are three muscles called auricularis around the ear to move the ears. Animals move their ears a lot to listen from which side the attacking animal is coming. They turn their ears to listen for sounds. But these auricularis muscles also disappear as soon as we don't need them. These are some organs in our body that are not useful for us and are becoming extinct as part of evolution. Evolution doesn't just stop with us, or it didn't all happen to make us. It is a continuous processor, which has been going on for hundreds of millions of years. Being unable to cope with the conditions of those days, scientists estimate that nearly 99% of living species have become extinct. In the end, the number of living species we have identified among the remaining ones is 87 lakhs. There are millions of living species that we don't even know about, among these billions of living beings, we humans are also one. But unfortunately, we are the wisest of all. And hence, we are destroying this nature. This nature has made many species extinct, and it is not a big deal for nature to make humans extinct, who are responsible for a factor that destroys so many billions of living beings. So, only if we protect this nature, the nature will protect us. All right, friends, that's it in this video. To watch more such interesting videos, subscribe to our channel and activate the bell button next to it. Also, to get updates from our channel from time to time, follow Let's Learn Together Score 7 on Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, Twitter. Thank you for watching.